he came from a very humble background. Uh, therefore, you know, his family had no means uh, for him to further his interests in art uh, when he was a young boy, uh, which meant that he never went to art school. Uh, so all that he knows about art uh, was through, you know, some early exposure when he studied art in uh, had, had art lessons in primary and secondary school, and thereafter um, he had to do a lot of self-learning, uh, reading books, talking to artists, um, looking at other artists' works, and constantly trying to improve himself. Many people know that he was self-taught, and uh, in his early period, although he was very interested in calligraphy and he practices writing every day, he actually started an artist, uh, he started his painting career uh, more as an oil painter. So in the 60s and 70s, he often exhibited uh, his oil paintings, um, traveling and exhibiting together with a group of friends, informally known as a 10-man group. And his style of painting was fairly realistic yeah, or naturalistic. When he retired, uh, when he turned 60 um, from his full-time job as a school principal, uh, he then decided to embark on Chinese ink painting in earnest. And this was quite a natural development given that he was already very strong in calligraphy. So moving into Chinese painting uh, was part of the, his artistic development. Coincidentally, when he became a full-time artist in the 1980s, it was also a period when Singapore's uh, landscape was undergoing drastic change. Uh, there was uh, tremendous uh, urban redevelopment, buildings were being torn down in Chinatown, uh, kampongs were being uh, demolished uh, to build new housing, and uh, all these were areas which Lin Ziping had grown up with and was uh, very fond of. So he kind of set a mission for himself to use his uh, ink painting uh, to document these disappearing sites. So during the period of the 80s, uh, he painted you know, hundreds of paintings uh, of Singapore's disappearing uh, scenes. Moved into his older years, uh, when he turned 80, he found that it was increasingly more difficult for him to work outdoors, uh, to work on site. Then he moved indoors and that freed him up to work on much larger pieces. Uh, he was no longer restricted by what he saw outdoors and he could rely on his memory and his imagination uh, to create very um, innovative and monumental works. Uh, so his works became much more colourful, more abstract, and I would say much more infused uh, with the calligraphic energy. Well, I would say that there are a few distinctive aspects about uh, Lin Tzu Ping's artistic practice. Um, firstly, he's an extremely versatile artist. Um, he's very strong in calligraphy, uh, Chinese ink painting, uh, but also quite well versed in uh, Western oil painting. And this is something that has really marked uh, Singapore artists in a very distinctive way. In Singapore, we have had very good calligraphers. We have also had very good uh, Chinese ink painters. Um, but we have, in terms of uh, an artist who has integrated calligraphy uh, with Chinese ink painting, I would say Lin Tzu Ping is one of those rare individuals who have done so in a very successful and seamless way. The important thing for me is that he has pushed the medium of calligraphy much further to become almost a purely visual language. So he has distorted the form of Chinese characters, uh, exaggerated it, 
uh, sometimes overlaying it with other Chinese characters or other uh, or colors, so much so that uh, he has created a new genre for himself known as Hu Tu Zi or muddled or muddled writing, uh, as it's been translated. So this, I, I think, is uh, a very exciting development for him personally and also for the ink painting scene in Singapore. Definitely, Lim Tzu Ping would have a place in Singapore art history. Um, as we all know, uh, he continues in that very fine tradition of uh, local artists who is very well versed in different art traditions. I'm talking about Chinese art traditions like calligraphy and ink painting, as well as uh, Western mediums uh, like oil painting, watercolor. So both art forms actually are very rich traditions and they inform each other. So an artist who is well versed in both uh, would find his or her practice tremendously enriched. Uh, he really pushed the medium of calligraphy uh, to a very extreme, exciting form uh, that becomes like an abstract visual language that can be appreciated beyond the content of the words. So in that respect, I think, again, uh, Lim Tzu Ping uh, would hold a very special place in Singapore's art history. Uh, one of the most common questions he asks people who visit him and when shown uh, his new work would be, do you think I have improved? So this is something that's been always at the back of his mind, which is that he's not an artist who wants to look back. He's constantly looking forward into the future, thinking about his next work, thinking about areas for improvement, areas where he could have artistic breakthroughs.